What is up everyone? Welcome to this GIMP tutorial. Today we are going to be going over sky replacements in GIMP. So as you can see here, I have this image that I took. I believe I took it on my phone and from the looks of it, I actually already cropped it. But as you can see, the sky is just white because it was a bright day and in order to get a proper exposure on these buildings, I also had to overexpose the sky. So let's go ahead and replace this sky with these pictures, this picture of clouds that I downloaded. Now the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna look at my picture of clouds, and I wanna look at my image, and I wanna determine where the sun is coming from. Now you don't have to get the exact right picture of clouds to go with everything, but it is good to kind of think about when you're choosing your picture. So right now you can see that this side of the building has light on it and this side is in shadow. So we know that the sun is coming from the right hand side. So if I turn on my clouds picture, we can see here that the sun is maybe kind of coming from behind the image a little bit behind where the photographer was. But also it looks like there's some shadow over here. It looks like maybe the sun is coming from this angle. So I'm not going to flip this image. If I was, I could just come here to layer and transform and flip horizontally. And then the sun would be coming from the other side. But I'm not gonna do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is resize my image. So I'm gonna hit Shift T and I'm going to make sure that my image opacity here is something worthwhile, like uh, maybe 60%. So I can see behind the image, and then I'm going to hold down Control, and I'm going to drag up until this image of clouds covers over the entire sky. Something like that. Okay. Now, that's good, but we also have the water down here that we're going to have to work on as well. So I'm going to hit Shift D, oops, Control Shift D to duplicate this image. And then I'm going to come here to Layer, Transform, and Flip Vertically. Now if I hit M on my keyboard to grab my Move tool, I can just move this down. And I'm going to move it down maybe somewhere like that. And then I'm going to rename this one as Clouds Reflection. And this one as just Clouds Sky. Okay, so now let's get started. Let me go ahead and turn both of those off. Select my back layer and Control Shift D to duplicate. And then I'm going to go here to Colors. What am I doing here? I want to get uh, Desaturate and desaturate. So I want to desaturate my image and then I'm going to come here to colors and levels. And I'm going to select this little white eyedropper and go ahead and select the sky. Maybe yeah, I'll select down here in the water. Uh, the water is 100% white and now I can come here and select the black eyedropper and select somewhere that I need something that I don't want to be transparent like the building. So let me select this part of the building here. And now you can see what we have. We have what looks like a really good looking mask. So I'll just click OK. And then I'm going to come up here to this clouds sky layer and I'm going to add in a mask, it doesn't matter what color, and same thing down here, I'm going to add in a mask, it doesn't matter what color, but we actually have a little bit of a problem, and that's that you can see this yellow outline here is, uh, it goes around the entire picture, but if I select the clouds layer, this outline only goes around where the clouds picture was. So real quick, I need to hit, sh uh, I need to hit control A to select my entire image, and then come here to layer, and crop to selection. Do that for both of these, the sky and the reflections layer. And then hit Control Shift A. Now you can see where my where my mask was just half the image. You can see that now my mask covers over the entire image. Control Shift A. That does mean that I lost any part of the clouds that were outside of my image, but that doesn't really matter so much. Okay, so now let me control shift click on this. There we go. 
turn both of these back on and I'm just going to take this image and hit control C and then select select this mask right here and hit control V and you can see that it pastes my sky right there and then just go ahead and click that and now here go up to the top and hit control V again and click the little anchor again and now if we turn off our um, if we turn off that layer mask layer you can see what we've got now we have a little bit of a problem and that is that this top layer here is coming through on our sky so the reflections is coming up so let's go ahead and fix that to fix that I'll just hit F on my keyboard and j just draw with the lasso tool all the way through these trees and then I can come up and grab that and then make sure I have black selected and hit shift B in order to grab my fill tool and then making sure that my image mask is selected for the reflections I can just click in there to delete that. Let's go ahead and hit control I on my keyboard that will invert my selection and then let me grab the cloud sky layer and go ahead and fill the bottom part of that with black as well that'll just that'll stop the two parts of the sky from getting messed up okay so we're running into a little bit of a problem and that is that our reflection kind of fades out here and it shouldn't so let me go ahead and grab this clouds reflection layer and let me go ahead and get rid of the layer that we used let me go ahead and get rid of the layer that we used for our mask and duplicate our background layer again and then this time let me do the same thing let's go to colors and desaturate this time with our black eyedropper let's go ahead and select a lily pad and then with our white eyedropper let's go ahead and select the water maybe you've got to find the right spot okay something like that and then let's go ahead and click OK if we go ahead and grab our magic or fuzzy select tool and just click in here in this white area we can bring back our reflection there and just turn that off and then if I hit P on my keyboard to bring in a brush make sure I have white selected and go ahead and increase the size of my brush I can actually just paint this reflection in now I like how the water is kind of fading out um, the reflection so I'm not gonna mess too much with that I'm actually just gonna kinda uh, let me go ahead and bring the force down to something like 25% uh, and bring the size up okay that looks about good control shift A um, and now we're just left with doing that one more time okay so now that I've gone ahead and filled all that in we've lost our lily pads just a little bit so to fix that let's come here to the layer let's make sure our layer is selected and we'll go here to mode and soft light and that will really kind of help us fix this issue here uh, you can see there's still kind of an overlay and if that really bugs you I mean like an image like this I feel like people are gonna just be looking at it on their phones with Instagram or something like that so these lily pads up here are not that big of a deal to me but if that really bugs you go ahead and select your image mask change your color to black and then you can just go ahead and paint away just very lightly make sure your force is down to something like 20 or 10 percent and uh, you can hit X to change your color to white in order to bring some of this back in paint that in I mean you could go in here and select each one of these uh, pads as well if you wanted to for the purposes of this tutorial I am not going to do that because that's going to take a long time okay one other thing that we need to do is control shift J to go full screen and then we can see up here our building has kind of had a rough go of it so I'm going to turn off our sky clouds and hit F on my keyboard to grab my lasso tool and then I'm just going to select this area 
like so. Something like that. And then if I turn that on and I select my image mask and hit Control I to invert my selection and shift B and make sure I have black selected, I can just bring that back. Okay. So now if you wanted to, you could go through and color correct the image. You could either color correct the clouds part or you could color correct the base image, whichever one you see fit. I generally like to use the hue and chroma tool to do that. That's actually a subject that could be covered in a whole other tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and end this one here. These are more just concepts as opposed to like making it really perfect. Obviously for me, if I was doing this for a client that really wanted a perfect sky replacement, then I would be spending a lot more time. I see a ton of issues myself, but I'm trying to keep this video around 10 minutes. So I hope that you understand. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you next time.